Hi, I'm Honey, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my new Quiller palette. I've been thinking about getting a new watercolor palette for a while now, and one day I woke up and I realized that I wanted to have a circular palette so I can arrange the paint colors in a color wheel. And I looked and looked for a really good palette that had the exact number of wells that I needed. And it took me a while, but I was able to find this particular palette. This particular palette has 12 wells arranged in a circle. I found that's the perfect amount of wells that I need for the amount of colors that I have. And it's not too many and it's not too few. The main reason I wanted to switch to a color wheel palette is because I wanted to switch to a limited color palette and I wanted to be able to see the relationships between the colors. Specifically, I wanted to see which colors are opposite of which colors easily. I'm using Daniel Smith's watercolors. For the primaries, I'm using their primary set, which consists of Perline Red, Hansa Yellow Medium, and French Ultramarine Blue. For the secondary colors, I'm using the Daniel Smith secondary set, which consists of Undersea Green, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, and Carbosol Violet. Here's what the instructions look like on the inside. This one is for the primary set. This is the swatch that came from the manufacturer. Here are the descriptions for the secondary set. This is what the colors look like swatched out by the manufacturer. In addition to these six colors, I'm also adding a black, which is neutral tint. Let's open this palette up. This palette is around 11 inches by 14 inches, so it's pretty large. My old palette was around 8 by 8 inches when open, and it folds up to a 4 by 8. So this is going to take up a lot more space on my table. Here's what the back looks like. It comes with instructions on how they recommend you set up the palette. One gripe I have about this palette is that the actual palette doesn't nest inside the top so you have to put it side by side and it takes up a lot of space i wish that it went in there but it doesn't fit the top also serves as an additional mixing palette so you can mix your colors in there as well there are 12 wells inside the circle and there are another 12 wells outside of the circle, so you can place your neutral colors in there. The wells with the arrows are where you're supposed to put your primary colors, and then the secondary colors go in between those primary colors. They have a recommendation on the instructions on where you're supposed to put each color as it relates to the color wheel. So I'm just going to place my tubes where I want them. So I'm going to put the yellow at the very top, the red on the left side, and the blue on the right side. And in between those colors, I'm going to put my secondary colors. So the burnt orange on the top left, the green on the top right, and the violet on the bottom.
I'm going to place my neutral tint on the bottom left corner, and that will serve as my black. Once I've decided where I want to place the colors, I'm just going to start squeezing out the paint. I usually like to just put a small amount of paint on my well because I like to have a little bit of extra space to put the water in because I like to dilute my paints on one side and have like a more concentrated paint on the other side. Whenever I set up a palette, I always like to do a color swatch. For this color swatch, I'm using watercolor paper, a pencil, and a ruler. I've listed everything I'm using in the description below. With my pencil and ruler, I'm just marking out where all the wells are so I can draw lines to signify where they're located at. Using my ruler, I'm just connecting those lines where I'm going to place my color swatches at. I'm not going to bother with making the actual circle because I want to have a lot of space to put my color swatch in. With a waterproof micron pen, I'm writing the names of the colors. In the past, I would omit this step thinking that I would remember what the actual colors are but I never do, so now I learned my lesson and I always write the names because once you have so many colors, it gets very confusing and it's really important to know which color it is or which brand of watercolor it is. To swatch out the colors, I'm using my Princeton Heritage size 6 watercolor brush and 3 cups of water. I dip my brush into clean water and I start out with a yellow I always like to start out with a yellow because it's the lightest color and it's the color that gets contaminated the easiest. So to keep it clean, it's just always easiest to start with that color. I'm using yellow full strength at the top and trying to pick up as much color as possible so it's the darkest possible color. So I can really see that full range of values from the very dark to the very light. So as I go down, I'm going to grab some water and just water it down a little bit so it gets into that medium range. And then add a little bit more water to get it even lighter. Whoops, I, I'm just grabbing some tissue to blot out that excess part and here at the bottom I'm just watering it down by a lot to get it to be really light so I can see that whole range of values At the very bottom, it's just really mostly water so I can see that really light value and then I'm just blending the colors up to get it a little bit smoother. Cleaning my brush and grabbing some red and doing the same thing on this side. And again, just watering it down, adding more water as I get towards the center. I accidentally splattered again at the sides. So I'm just grabbing that with a paper towel and to erase it. I like having a part of the well be empty of the tube paint so that I can use that area to mix the paint with water. So one part of my well is usually the tube paint 
and the other part is the paint with water. This orange is the secondary color between yellow and red. So if you mix up yellow and red, you'll get orange. And technically, you can just use the actual yellow and actual red to mix it up. But it's also nice to have that color ready mixed already so that if you need orange, you can just grab it. But you can always mix those two colors on each side of the secondary color. Same thing with the green. Yellow plus blue makes green so you can mix those colors up and have green. And at the bottom is the same thing. If you mix red and blue, it will make violet. If you like this video, please make sure to click that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications of when I have new content. Thank you so much for watching.